Picture, if you will, a brisk winter's morning. You peek through the curtains and see the world hidden beneath a blanket of crisp white snow. It's truly magical. Until you get in your car. Then it's just unbelievably dangerous. The big problems with driving on snow are momentum and a low coefficient of friction, which is not helped by a weird layer of water molecules known as a quasi-liquid. Here's the science. Snow's consistency means it easily fills in a tyre's otherwise grippy tread. Worse still, it's covered by a film of water in a quasi-liquid state. Not quite liquid, not quite solid, but very slippy. The resulting low coefficient of friction can cause a skid, especially on a bend, where the vehicle's sideways momentum easily overcomes the back wheel's poor traction with the ground. The coefficient of friction is a measure of the amount of friction between two surfaces. For instance, tyres on tarmac on a dry summer's day measures around 0.7, but that can drop to around 0.3, about half as grippy, on a snowy street in Siberia. Like this morning in Vladivostok, where everyone is stuck in the snow. Apart from him. Coming through. Yeah. Don't don't mind me. He's using the combination of quasi-liquid, clogging snow and steep gradient to demonstrate transfer of momentum. Minibus transfers momentum to 4x4. To tractor. 4x4 to tractor. Tractor back to minibus. And very nearly to this man. Siberia, it's way more fun than you'd think. This young researcher, hi, maintains traction and control by easing around the corner. Fast forward a few minutes and... does the complete opposite. By increasing velocity and therefore momentum, he lost traction. So whilst he wanted to travel around the corner, his back end wanted to travel into the fence. But velocity isn't the only thing that affects momentum. There's also mass. One car in the car park, and you manage to hit it. That's actually quite impressive. Do you like cycling really fast, but tired of having to slow down at every corner? Well, there's a special, magical place just for you. Behold the velodrome, where specially banked bends help cyclists keep their speed up to the max. It's the domain of the creme de la creme. Cheer up, mate. There's no point in crying over spilt creme. So how do a velodrome's banked corners help you go faster? And what problems lie therein? Well, let's consult our old friend, the science. On a regular corner, our cyclist is pulled inwards by centripetal force and outwards by centrifugal force. <laughs> but on a bank turn, Additional centripetal force pushes the rider inwards, helping him build velocity without falling off. Cyclists tend to group along the shortest route around the oval track, exploiting the reduced air resistance in each other's slipstream. But get too close, and one wheel can transfer momentum to another, resulting in linear velocity becoming angular velocity. The banking in turns is called super elevation, and they can help you reach extremely high speeds. For example, on an Olympic-sized track with no banking, the maximum speed you could corner without hitting the deck is around 28 miles an hour. But on a super elevation, you can fly at up to 50 miles an hour. And 
then hit the deck. Having built velocity around the turn, the chap on the inside fancied overtaking the leader, but didn't notice the guy on his right, resulting in a bit of momentum transfer and some angular velocity here and here. 